He was criticised while associate spokesperson on health for accepting a corporate box from British American Tobacco and allegedly blowing a cigar smoke into the face of someone who complained. And he's been thought of as a fresher face for the National Party and a future political star. Tonight he joins us in his capacity as spokesperson for broadcasting to discuss what National really believe about public broadcasting and how they intend to improve it. Joining me on Let's Be Frank tonight is National Party spokesperson Dr Jonathan Coleman. Welcome to the show. Thanks Oliver. So, did you blow smoke into someone's face? No, I didn't blow smoke into someone's face. But, you know, you're in politics, you're in the public eye, you've just got to accept stuff that gets written sometimes and just move on to another day. And, you know, life's moved on. A lot's happened uh, in my uh, political and personal life since that time. So, you know, there's some lessons from that episode and uh, which I've learned. Because with even, even without, and I'm not going to harp on about it, but even without blowing yeah. the smoke in it, you're, you're a doctor. Yeah. You're the spokesperson for mm. the health of the National Party. Yeah. Was there at any stage where you went, maybe go into the box for British American tobacco is the bad idea? Yeah, actually, I did think that, to be honest. But then my approach uh, as a doctor and as a politician had always been, look, I will make up my own mind on issues. I'll get information from all sides. But frankly, uh, at the end of the day, I'm my own person and I'll make my decision without... Uh, outside influence. But I accept now in politics perception becomes reality or is reality and that really you know it's not a good look uh, to be seen to go to the British American tobacco box when you're associate health but you know at the end of the day what's happened has happened things move on. Are you a smoker? No I'm not. Do you think smoking is good? I don't, would not recommend that anyone smoked, frankly. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. All right. Uh, last week we had Trevor Mallard on the show to talk about the broadcasting policy yeah, sure. that you guys brought out. We gave him the opportunity to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, his first question was, how can you possibly guarantee that you won't sell TVNZ within five years? How would you respond to that? Well, look, we've been up front saying we uh, have written our policy for this election. We are not going to be selling the TVNZ. That's not on the agenda. If you look at what's happened to the value of TVNZ over time, it's just about halved under this Labor government. Uh, if anyone was going to sell it, 1999 was probably the time. But, you know, things move on. We reckon it's a great television company. We, with this policy, have just tried to give it uh, an honest, transparent policy under which to operate. We're saying, look, the charter's been a complete sham. Uh, what's the difference in terms of what's on television when you look at before the charter as opposed to op uh, after the charter? The answer is there is no difference. Let's give them uh, an honest environment in which to work in and to get on and do what they do best, making or producing, putting on the screen good television and returning a dividend to the taxpayer. I guess a lot of people would agree with you that the charter's not working. Yeah. It's just that there are those that would say, well then let's fix the charter so it does work because the, the actual thought behind the charter is, is good to enforce you know, the publicly, our public broadcaster. Yeah, the thing is uh, you've got to face the fact that TVNZ is a public broadcaster in name only. I mean, it's been a commercial broadcaster for a long, long time. Now, this dual mandate that it's been operating under has meant that it's been neither one thing nor the other. It's really fallen between two stools, and I know that sounds cliche, but it's been uh, a big problem for it having to perform to these charter requirements and also to return a dividend to the government. And we're saying, look, this is ridiculous. It can't continue on like this. We're giving it an honest policy under which to operate. Now, that doesn't mean we don't support public broadcasting, because we do. But when you look at the way the technology is developing and how people are watching TV, we reckon the role of government is to provide funding for public broadcasting content. But we're saying, look, we don't care where it's shown, so long as it's available to the public. It could be on TV3, it could be on Maori TV, TVNZ. We're going to fund content and get it on people's screens. But this idea of one sort of monolithic public broadcaster, that's really out of touch with the way the technology is going. I mean, you know how people watch, uh, or are starting to watch, many people already are watching TV very much along the iPod model. You source your content from anywhere, you assemble it, you time shift it, you watch it at your own convenience. Now that's not really compatible with a model uh, which says, hey, here's a, a public broadcaster, let's pour all the funding in there and hope people come to it, because it's not going to work. It's not the way that TV's going to be watched in the future. Sure, but it is the way that TV's watched at the moment, because... Well, is it? Well, let's be frank, where do, how do you watch TV? Well, I don't watch a lot of TV. Uh, do, I wish I could do you watch? watch more. Do you download something onto your pod or do you watch it on TV? Because I'm, I'm pretty I technologically stuff. savvy, I but I watch it at different times. But I mean, a lot of people are watching things with programs like LimeWire. If you look at people 
people in their 20s now. People are increasingly doing that. They're choosing when and where they watch stuff. They're not just going to go home and say, oh, what's on TV one tonight? I'll just sit out, down and veg out in front of the TV. People aren't doing that anymore. And what we've tried to do here is produce a policy that we've set in the policy fit for the future. So whichever way the technology plays out, there is secure funding for public broadcasting. And this is the point people like Trevor Mallard are missing. We're backing public broadcasting as opposed to supporting one public broadcaster. And at the end of the day, that's good for the public because it's about them. It's about getting good stuff on the screens that people can watch. Is there a danger with backing broadcasting rather than a broadcaster that the type of shows that will go for funding and therefore get funding are going to be more mainstream than what the Charter is there to implement? Well, you know, if you look at Outrageous Fortune and those sorts of things, which are sort of skating on the edge of, well, you could probably find the money anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, those shows have got uh, funding, but I mean, look at stuff that New Zealand On Air has funded. I mean, I think uh, with your arts programme, you've had funding from New Zealand On Air in the past. The, in New Zealand On Air do a great job. The arts programme that TVNC cancelled, by the way, but carry on. OK, oh, we have to take that up with them. <laughs> but look, the reality is we don't want to uh, burden the, the system with a whole lot of extra rules and bureaucracy. New Zealand On Air do a great job of funding Kiwi content of funding stuff that reflects our lives. Not of all, it is uh, all commercial, not all, all of it is commercial stuff. Uh, you know, the funding through NZ On Air is a subsidy to get those programs made. We reckon New Zealand On Air actually does the job that the charter is supposed to do. So we reckon there still will be great public broadcasting content. It's not going to all be stuff like Outrageous Fortune. And the whole point about the charter was that it was meant to get programs on the screen which wouldn't otherwise have been made. And what they did, they took that money, they used it to make stuff like Mucking In, like Sunday, uh, programs which they would have made anyway. So we're saying, hey, look, this is the way of the future. It's a transparent policy. It's going to produce great content. And at the end of the day, you go out into the streets of my electron in Glenfield, people just want to see good stuff on TV. They don't care what channel it's on. Look, you've got solid arguments. You seem very confident in the way that you do them, which makes me wonder why you wouldn't agree to a debate uh, that we asked you to do last week on the show. And that was the other question Trevor Mallard asked, which was, why aren't you strong enough to say no to John Key and come on this show and debate with him on the policies? Because why, why couldn't you do that? Oh, look, Trevor Mallard would just have an agenda. You can see that but what they're doing agenda. whenever... Of course you've got No, he doesn't want to talk about the policy. He wants to shoot down our policies with scare stories about what National will do if we get into government. You know, he wants to say, therefore, we're going to sell this, we're going to do that. Therefore, isn't it better for you we to be there to say that's wrong? We wouldn't have been talking... Oh, look, no one's going to bother, bother watching Trevor Mallard. We are far more interested in actually talking about the policy issues because what Labor would want to do is suck us into some debate where we end up fighting. And, you know, that's not what it's about. We want to actually have a decent, mature discussion about the real policy issues without dragging the politics into it. And that's why I didn't bother debating Trevor So Mallard. Is, there a, is there a rule in the National Party that you're not allowed to debate Labor MPs in the media? No, there's no rule about that. No. So what was the reason that you said no? I've just told you, that's exactly the reason. There was no upside to debating Trevor Mallard. He was just going to attack the policy with scare stories. We would have ended up just in a big sort of uh, a punch up on screen about matters which were to do with broadcasting policy. And I want to talk about broadcasting policy and policy issues in general. There was no political upside to it. Uh are you sure National aren't ducking scrutiny? I mean, John Key hasn't had a set press conference to discuss policy in over a year. The last one was the embarrassing health policy release where journalists pointed out that your policy would remove restrictions on doctors' feeds and lead to higher charges. Other pol policy release so far has been like one email long. Your broadcasting policy, for example, is 339 words. Well, you know that 339 word policy? People read it. You look at Labor's broadcasting policy for 1999, 10 pages of guff. Did anyone read it? No, I don't think so. The second thing I'd say, John Key, there would not be a politician in New Zealand who has ever been under the scrutiny that John's under. I mean, look at that uh, review section profile in the Herald last week. And he stood up 100%. His life was opened up. There's nothing to hide. There'll be more of it tomorrow. There's nothing to hide. You know, th this is the thing. Labour is... keep on gonna go, going to go on about, you know, what are they hiding? We are hiding nothing. Well, what else can they go on about apart from John exactly. Key and yourselves? Because They've you're not releasing They've got nothing else policy. to go on because they're a government but that's out not, of ideas. But you're not releasing oh, policy. Oh, we have. We've so released can't, can't... our industrial relations policy, ACC broadcasting. There's going to be plenty more of it to come. You've released uh, art and culture, communications, IT, community affairs, nothing about Auckland issues, nothing about building construction, commerce, consumer affairs, economic development, energy, ethnic affairs, finance and taxation, immigration, labour and industrial related, local government. And hey, affairs, industrial relations was released tourism. this week. Come on. Listen, all this is going to be out well in time for the election. Is it? Because John Key yeah, says that things like the tax policy isn't going to be out until the announcement of the election, until the election po electionary starts. Well, well, you see, I'll tell you what, if Labor gives us an election date, we'll give the public the policy. And that's it. Why don't you go to Helen Clark and say, hey, when's 